Hi, hello, this is Renato Almeida from Brazil. I'm a long, uh, long time friend of the channel here, and you're listening to Sega Lounge. <laughs> Welcome to the Sega Lounge, where we celebrate our love for all things Sega, including the games, the music, and the community. I'm your host, KC. Join me as I talk to different guests and learn more about their projects and passion for Sega. Hey everyone, welcome to the Sega Lounge. Welcome to episode 233 of the Sega Lounge. We've got a very special episode for you this week as we continue uh, celebrating uh, a, a diversity of uh, anniversary, Sega anniversaries around the world. So we've talked about the, the Sega Genesis uh, anniversary. Uh, this week we're going to go a little bit, uh, we're going to go to the south of the USA. Yeah, still in America though. And we're celebrating the anniversary of yet another console. But I couldn't do it alone. I, I had to have help. And what better person to have to join me in celebrating the anniversary of the Master System in Brazil than my good friend <laughs> Renato Almeida. Hello, Renato. Hi. Hello, hello. I'm I'm very, very pleased to be here. Uh, well, and it's uh, it makes a lot of sense to... Uh, bring this episode to Brazil, you know, uh, even with uh, the, the whole uh, history of the Master System here, which is uh, still a history that uh, uh, we are telling, you know, the Master System is pretty much alive these days. Yeah. Here. So yeah, it makes sense <laughs> and yeah. happy to be here. Excellent. Thank you so much, my friend, for, for joining us again. You've you've been on this show before. We had actually we had uh, like a two-part episode, uh, like back in season six, perhaps two years, three mm -hmm. years ago. Uh, yeah. And so people interested in that should actually check out those two episodes. But for people who might have missed that, would you... Like, briefly tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're currently doing. Oh, yeah. I I believe, uh, as of now, uh, being this my fourth or fifth uh, uh, time here at, at the show, uh, people might remember me from my story where I, I told everyone that when I was nine years old, I used to play uh, with my my cousins and friends that I, I was the president of Sega. And uh, a few years later, I was working uh, with the like kind folks of Sega, representing them here in Brazil. So uh, quite of a story <laughs> if we consider uh, uh, the, 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 the origins of this, you know. And uh, I've been working with... Uh, 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 as a PR here in, in the Brazilian territory, I have my own age, my own agency here, and uh, for six years now I own Masamone, and we represent uh, gaming companies uh, across Latin America, not only Brazil. So what we do is to be like the one-stop shop for solutions for gaming companies in, in the territory here, and I'm very pleased to. Uh, tell you all that I've been working with Sega in many capacities with several of their offices and, and several friends, and it's been a, a quite a ride. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. And I, I sincerely urge people to go back to those episodes where we, we talked about all of the, your, your origin story, so to speak, yeah, and, <laughs> and how you ended up meeting uh, the actual CEO of, of Sega. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so people should actually check that out. Yeah. And, and, um, and there was the and there was the challenge. The challenge was also pretty exciting. <laughs> I, I remember that the, the questions, you know, being at the show, I was nervous, but well, there's a there's a there's a good uh, a good part. Uh, yeah, I think you crushed it. <laughs> yeah, you did a very good job there. Yeah. Yeah, so. but it's 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 challenging, you know, the pressure of <laughs> being here. 
<laughs> we we need to to get you back on the show for a, a, like just one of those like special challenge episodes where we just have like two teams uh, against each other. We need oh, to do that. Nice. Yeah, that would be nice. nice. Gonna, I'm actually I, I'm actually uh, shh, it's a secret, but I'm actually planning a few special challenges with cool. uh, like previous guests since this is our 10th uh, anniversary year. Uh, and we still have a few more episodes to go this year, this season. Uh, but don't tell anyone. It's just, it's still yeah. a secret. No one's listening. <laughs> so we're, we're cool. We're cool. Okay. Yeah. And I like some competition. So I mean. Nice. <laughs> nice. So I, I'm, full disclosure, no challenge today because we're, we're celebrating 35 years of the master system in Brazil, which is kind of amazing. Uh, and also... Probably weird for some people who are. We we, we just had a, a recently an episode celebrating 35 years of the Sega Genesis in the U.S. But obviously, uh, at the time, consoles were released in different times in different parts yeah. of the world. So the Master System arrived a little bit later to Brazil and to other parts of the world as well. But since it's it's such an important part of Brazilian gaming hi history uh, and it had such a, a deep impact on on like Brazilian culture as well and it still has like you were saying I, I thought it would be remiss of, uh, of us not to celebrate not to sit down and talk a little bit about the importance of the Sega Master System so I, I, I'd like to start with a more personal point of view Renato uh, to you what does the master system mean and how did you actually get one? What was like, what was the story behind that? I think you told, told us a little bit about that when you came on the, the show the first time, mm -hmm. but like briefly, how did you find out about the master system and what does it mean to you? Yeah. So, uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is that uh, the master system was the very beginning of uh, what we say right now uh, uh, as the gaming industry, you know, uh, uh, seeing video games as more than a simple toy, you know. Uh, the Master System wasn't my first console. I had uh, Atari clone uh, before that. It was a gift from my father and he used it to play with me. But it was that, you know, it was like a electronic, an electronic toy, uh, which I used to to have fun with my with my dad, and I I learned about the master system through uh, uh, my uh, my cousins. You know, they were uh, they, they 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 got one. Uh, I don't remember if it was uh, some of my cousins' birthday, you know, something like that, and. Um, there was uh, some stores where you could also rent games, and uh, due to the massive uh, the massive uh, work uh, that Tectoy was beginning to put out uh, to promote the Master System, uh, we saw that uh, like big cities like Sao Paulo, they they were receiving uh, uh, the consoles and people were buying their consoles, and my cousins they got their own Master System. Uh, because their father, they bought one on Paraguay, on the country of Paraguay. Because it was like a, a, a normal thing to see gaming consoles coming to Brazil through Paraguay. And uh, it was not the Tectoy model. And uh, later on, on the same year during Christmas, I got my own. And it was not the Tectoy model. I, I had the Tectoy model uh, later on. But the first one that I had was the one where you didn't have Alex Kidd in the in, in, in the memory as we yeah, used yeah. to say. Uh, I had the model with uh, Safari Hunt, Hang On, and the the Secret Game, which was like an urban urban legend, you know. And uh, the thing that caught me that like caught me uh, immediately was that we finally had. Uh, a jump uh, in technology. So the colors, the graphics, the, the the sound, it was very similar to the things that we were able to see at the arcades, you know. So uh, 
I, I loved my Atari. Don't get me wrong, you know. I used a lot of imagination uh, by <laughs> creating the stories that the cover arts was trying to tell with the simple graphics that the, the console was capable to offer. But, uh, well, it was a lot of effort, you know. <laughs> and the master system was different, you know. It was all very bright and colorful. And I'm, I'm, I'm to this day, I'm very passionate uh, about the color palette of that console, you know. I, I, I really love uh, the NES and what, what the games that the console brings. But when I put them uh, side by side, I'm always uh, uh, looking to the side of, of Sega with the Master System. You know, those colors, they get me every time, you know. Yeah. And uh, particularly the two games that came with the console, Safari Hunt and Hang On, they were very engaging and very easy to jump in and jump off and to have a great time with. Uh, Safari Hunt, I used it to play with my father. Uh, it was like a, a family thing. And Hang On was a, a, a game where we could try to uh, get better and better and better. And we saw later on in magazines that the porting was outstanding. You know, if you were able to check the arcade version, uh, it, it was like incredible to see what the, the console was capable of. And you had the accessories, you know, you had everything uh, like in the the whole environment of the system, which made it uh, like even better. So what defines uh, the master system for me was this jumping in technology. You know, it was not uh, a simple toy. It was the real deal. You know, it was yeah. the, 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 the first impression was the one that uh, we were truly in the future. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I can get that. It's it's funny to to think about uh, what you said before. We if you played like an Atari game or something, I I I've mentioned this a few times before on the show. I usually say that my first console was the Mega Drive. Uh, however, in recent years, I seem to have remembered that I used to have some sort of Atari console. Or maybe an Atari clone, like some sort mm -hmm. of Pong machine. Uh, but I probably what happened, and the reason for 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 me saying the first console was the Mega Drive was it probably in my mind as a kid, I I was able to separate the quality of the like the, that Atari system or a clone and the quality of the Mega Drive. So wasn't even remotely similar, right? The, the kind of graphics and the experience and the music. Uh, and so I, I can relate to that experience of having to create stories and like trying to f imagine in your head that that like stick figure was actually uh, yeah. a person or, or a monster or whatever it was, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right? And yeah. then yeah. seeing like the real thing, the real deal. Uh, uh -huh. When playing Master System or Mega Drive games, that was a whole different experience, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. And uh, uh, in my case, I remember that well, my childhood hero was uh, He-Man. Uh, the show was very popular, and I it was my favorite hero. And I had I had the game for the Atari, you know, and it was uh, like. Uh, really fun it was uh it was very limited obviously but i had a lot of fun with that game and when we got the master system i was craving a new game a new he-man game a new masters of the universe game with that color palette with that many uh, details you know uh, i was imagining that like constantly and uh, one of the magazines here in brazil uh some games they uh, they had like a fixed uh, segment every month, or ev I think the, the it was bi-weekly. Uh, but every issue they brought uh, like a question to uh, the readers, uh, which is your like like what what's the game that you want to see the most? You know that uh, that you want to see a company creating. And uh, I remember that uh, the the. There, there was a lot of IPs that people was craving to see games uh, from, like the Wood Woodpecker uh, was okay. very popular, 
and I saw lots of letters from 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 fans asking for my game. The Dinosaur Family the, by Disney. I don't recall okay. the name of the show, but with the animatronic uh, uh, figures with yeah, dinosaurs yeah, yeah, was yeah. very popular. And He Man was also a, a, a character that people wanted to see in a game. But in the end, we didn't have anything like that. <laughs> so it yeah. was a bummer, you know. The console <laughs> came to an end, and no He Man game, no Masters of the Universe. But so yeah, that's for, that's part of the pe people listening to this or watching this. And and if you're creating games for the Master System, come on, let, let's create a Masters of the Universe uh, game for the Master System. It's 2024. It's time. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Let, let, absolutely. You, uh, you, you, you'll make uh, Renato happy, so that's that's a plus, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would be very happy. I would be very very happy. Excellent. Yeah, you mentioned um, you mentioned Hang On uh, as a as a highlight in, in the game you 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 had, um, and I, I we can actually we have uh, some gameplay footage here of, of Hang On. And it's it's really amazing how uh, close if, you, if it was to the arcade experience, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's mesmerizing. <laughs> yeah, it's really really great how uh, how that that little console was able to do this was was really amazing. Yeah, did you play this a lot? <laughs> oh yeah, a lot, a lot. <laughs> yeah, I was always trying to get like better times and. Uh, 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 within the the box of the of the cartridges back in the day, we used to have like the the leaflet uh, with the mm -hmm. or the instruction. Uh, there was a space where you could write down your like records and stuff like that. That game I didn't have the box because it came uh, inside the the console. Uh, but I, I remember taking notes of uh, of the times you know that uh, that we were able to cross every single. Uh, line, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it was a lot of fun, and yeah. and uh, uh, this game reminded me uh, uh, a lot of uh, Enduro uh, on the Atari because you mm -hmm. have the the scenery changing, you know, like you can see the weather. Uh, we can see now at the screen like new uh, new scenery, uh, mm -hmm. the cloud sky getting dark, you know. So it was very impressive because this was. Uh, doing it like properly uh, as we see in real life so that was the kind of emotion that the game and the console was capable to uh to give us yeah for sure for sure yeah so uh, like you said amazing i right? like these changes uh, mm -hmm. a, a simple thing nowadays but very impressive back in the day yes yeah. yes yeah okay especially considering what we had before right yeah That's of it. course of course okay so did you did you um, know of this? How how did you learn about the Master System? By the way, what was was it through magazines? Was it through advertising? Through word of mouth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. First, first, first thing was word of mouth. Uh, when you are a kid, there's always some uh, component of competition between you and your friends. So uh, who is getting the hottest game first? You know. So this is always part of the conversation. And uh, I remember that uh, in school, friends uh, telling that they are going to get a new system and uh, the system promised to be like amazing. And we didn't have any proof, you know. So it was something that, okay, show me. When you get this console, invite me to your place and we're going to play the hell of that console, you know. So it was something <laughs> like that. So I first heard about the master system then we i heard about that from my my cousins and then they got the, their their own uh, and we started to play constantly there and i was begging to my father to uh, get me one uh, by the time uh, by christmas and that was that was uh, that was that happened in the end you mm -hmm. know <laughs> okay and Excellent. i had to give i had to give away my Atari, so as part of the the purchase, so it was part mm. of the the purchase money. Um, so we sold the Atari to the store and used part of the money to pay for the master system. But I was super happy, you know. I wasn't <laughs> thinking about 
uh, getting back to the Atari. I, I had a great time with the Atari, but uh, it, it, was, uh, it was time to, to depart. <laughs> yeah, to upgrade to a, a yeah. different, a better system. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. and it was nice because we were able to uh, get a new cartridge uh, for the master system in special occasions like birthdays or Christmas, and you could exchange with your friends or your uh, your family, as uh, I've done in the past with my my cousins. And also, it was the time where we saw uh, the rental stores getting more and more popular, so they would bring. Uh, uh, games that they could purchase and buy from Tech Toy, but also sometimes they would bring uh, games from abroad, you know, so to, they, they used to import some stuff from Europe. And then uh, once Tech Toy uh, managed to solidify its presence as the leader when it comes to the Master System worldwide, then we had many games uh, that nobody else had the chance to play, you know. So uh, exclusive, uh, yeah. if I can, if I can say, yeah, for sure, yeah, for sure. Um, so I, I, I was trying to research um, or find a list of, uh, like, an official list of launch games, launch titles for the Master System in Brazil. I don't know if you have any idea. I, I wasn't able to find like a a proper list because it's probably mm. hard to remember which ones, and there's no real official record of that uh, I'm sure someone remembers but do you have any idea of how many games and like which ones were you already mentioned the ones that were that came like built into the console um, yeah which yeah. other the, ones do you the, remember being launched with the, the, the console the, itself the game the game that I that, uh, remember the most uh, mostly because of the advertising that was uh, very strong was Alex Kidd in Miracle World, for sure. But uh, uh, I don't recall if Tech Toy uh, started selling their own system uh, produced here in Brazil uh, with Alex Kidd in the, as the game that was built in the console, or if they had uh, some, some, uh, some copies or some uh, Master System uh, model one, as uh, if we can say like that, but yeah. uh, with Gone in Safari Hunt. Uh, but mostly, uh, when we call, when we talk about uh, the the launch here, Alex Kid is the is the heavy hitter, you know, because you could find uh, uh, it was the 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 front man for magazines and for uh, advertising, TV advertising, everything. So. If you talk to 10 Brazilian gamers from, from that era, 11 will tell you that Alex Kidd was the, was the, the little guy moving. Uh, the mascot, uh, from, right? The mascot, yeah. yeah. That's right. <laughs> for sure, for sure. So Alex Kidd was a big thing. Right? I, I think yeah. that's, that's not just in Brazil, but uh, mm -hmm. we, most people... I, so I, I actually never owned a master system back in the day. So... Uh, I, I my experience is a little bit different, and that's why I also like to learn about mm -hmm. people's experiences with this console. Uh, I played uh, at a friend's house. I played the console, I, and I remember playing Sonic One uh, mm -hmm. there in Sonic Two, if I'm not mistaken. The first mm -hmm. experience I had was a Master System. A few years into already owning my own Mega Drive, so mm -hmm. it wasn't the first thing, but I was very impressed. I remember being very impressed with like the the quality of the game because the little I knew of the Master System was that it was much less powerful than the Mega Drive, right? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. That's what I I as a kid I I understood that it was less powerful, and in my mm -hmm. head it wasn't even remotely close to what the Mega Drive could do. So when I saw Sonic One and I realized. It was a little bit more simplistic in a way, but it was the Sonic One experience that we had on the Mega Drive mm -hmm. in a way. I was mm -hmm. a bit surprised and and like hmm, impressed. That's interesting. Um, yeah. But but I remember uh, I wasn't really aware of Alex the connection between Alex Kid and the Master System. Uh, I remember Alex Kid 
in the Enchanted Castle for the the Mega Drive. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm, it was mm -hmm. also on the back of the box of the Mega Drive. There yeah. were like all those little squares with mm -hmm. uh, different games. That was one of them. But obviously later I realized that people who owned a Master System really, really associate the Master System with Alex Kidd. It's the, yeah. Alex is the face of the Master System, at least for a, the first few years of, of the console, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. And one other game that I remember playing like really early in the life cycle of the of the Master System here was Shinobi. Shinobi was a, a very popular game. Uh, I don't recall if it was like a, a in the launch lineup, but it was in a, in the early life cycle, uh, in the early stages of the life cycle of the console. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, uh, Tectoy was... Uh, betting really high on selling the, the the bundle version of the console. So the one with the light phaser and the 3D glasses. So uh, most certainly we had uh, games for for those peripherals. And I can recall Gangster Town being a very strong name and also Wanted, which, which was the uh, cowboy, uh, cowboy game. Uh, which was very popular. So those are some of the games I remember really early in the in the in the life of the console. Because mm -hmm. Sonic was uh, was came came uh, a bit later. Later, uh, yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. So for people wondering about wanted, this is wanted. Yeah, on the Master System, right? So yeah, for uh, people watching the 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 video version for listeners, go watch the video version on YouTube. But uh, yeah. yeah, it's like it, it reminds me a little bit of what um, Sunset Riders did later. Yeah. Like in yeah. the arcades and on the Mega Drive as well. Uh, yeah, of course. And, <laughs> so this was the, a light and, phaser game, right? Yes. And this the, the it has the same structure of Gangster Town. Obviously, the setting mm -hmm. is different. One is in the Wild West and the other one, it's uh, like you can say like Chicago. In yeah. The like 30s, the 1930s something like or that. something. Yeah. Yeah. But it was really fun, and uh, uh, I remember that we used to have a lot of reruns of uh, like of uh, cowboy movies in, in on on TV. And uh, when I saw that game and playing it, playing it with the light phaser, it was amazing. You know, like <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, you have some bonus levels in between stages. And the perspective is a different one, and the character is super big, you know, with like bigger sprites. And in my imagination, was like Clint Eastwood is in my television playing with me, you know, so something like that. It was awesome. Awesome. <laughs> and there's there's some some writing segments as well, writing segments. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. There you go. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Also, also uh, uh, emulated uh, in spirit by Sunset Riders. Uh, there was, True. there was, uh, there were some stages uh, like that in Sunset Riders uh, mm -hmm. later on. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Okay, so thank you for sharing your your experiences. So I, I'm going to put you on the spot now, as I okay. as I like to do, and uh, ask you to pick. You can you can choose between a top three and a top five Master System okay. games of all time. Is that easy or not okay. for you? It's easy. <laughs> oh, really? Nice. Okay. Yeah, it's set in stone. <laughs> okay. I, I I probably I probably may have a hard time positioning them, but I know okay. what the five uh, the five best are for for me. It's okay. It's okay. No problem. <laughs> so, cool. like in in no particular order, what in comes no first? No particular order. Okay. So. Uh, Fantasy Star, it's a, a heavy hitter for me, uh, mm -hmm. mainly because it surpasses the, the experience of playing a game. It was a collective experience for me because I, I, was, uh, I had the chance to beat this game with the help of my cousins. You know, we, I remember us reunited uh, like several days uh, straight, uh, making our own maps, uh, like writing down and, and creating and drafting our own maps uh, to get uh, out of the the the, the maze, you know, the mm -hmm. the dungeon. And the most uh, impressive thing for everyone back in the day is that Tech Toy uh, localized the game, in. so it was fully localized. 
uh, localized in, in Brazilian Portuguese. And nowadays we will see that there are some patches with better uh, localizations, so adaptations according to the lore. But, mm -hmm. you know, we're talking about the early, early 90s here, you know, and uh, it was impressive to see this happening. Nobody was uh, 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 counting on it. And I recall uh, that there was an ad in several magazines uh, talking about how impressive it was to have an RPG uh, localized to Brazilian Portuguese. So it's, uh, I, I, I can say that this game was uh, uh, the one responsible for kicking, kickstarting the, the Brazilian industry uh, as we have it today, you know, because mm -hmm. nowadays uh, localization uh, is something that you can count on, uh, be it in AAA games, but also on indie games. And that's, that, that's what uh, inspired me to uh, create uh, our own localization department at Masamune. And we've been localizing games that I've dreamt, I, was, I had a dream to localize one day, and the inspiration was that, you know, because localization back in the day was accessibility. We yeah. were kids, you know, we, mm -hmm. we, we, we didn't have uh, uh, the chance to, to learn the language, uh, the English language before, you know. So we, uh, it was very, very important, you know. So it was a, a very important one, and I, I bring that one all the time. Uh, yeah, and, and it was a very, a very sorry. It was a, a very text-heavy game, right? So uh, an yes. RPG with a lot of text, without yes. uh, knowing English, understanding English. Yes, you wouldn't be able to understand this. So th that was yeah, really absolutely people. People listening to us obviously don't have that problem, but uh, unless you're you don't speak English and you're listening to this for some reason, which thank you, <laughs> but. I don't understand, but okay. But uh, for for people who whose native language language is not English, having something localized in your own language, something so dense in terms of yeah. text, was really really important. Because I think uh, the the importance of Fantasy Star as a whole as a game uh, is some sometimes understated. People don't talk about it enough, but people and I'm not I'm I'm not saying this as a massive fan of the game because I'm not really I'm a more recent RPG player mm -hmm, so I'm mm -hmm. not like a, a person that played a lot of RPGs growing up uh, but mm -hmm. I do understand that fans of RPGs and people who played especially Fantasy Star 1 back in the mm -hmm. day uh, really cons uh, regard this as a, as a very important title and, and having this in your own language was probably an amazing thing right back in the day yeah yeah and the that advertising that i've mentioned uh previously uh the tagline uh it was it will take you three months to beat this game <laughs> uh, this is an rpg uh, so it, it was kind of a, an introduction uh to the subject as well because uh, uh it was explaining what the game was like what you were able to do, and why the game was so long, you know. And uh, I remember uh, getting, uh, being really impressed with this. Three months? Sometimes I beat a game like in a, in a <laughs> in one afternoon and I have to return it to the rental store. Give me this game. I want this game, you know. I want to play for three months straight if, I, if I'm able to. <laughs> But yeah, and, uh, and was, uh, before we before we move on, uh, you mentioned something that I, I find interesting, and I've heard before other people saying that before, like the the communal experience of of playing the game with others and sharing yeah. that same experience. Um, yeah. In recent years, that there aren't many games that have that same effect. I, I can think of. Maybe something like Breath of the Wild, uh, Zelda, and, and Tears of the Kingdom, and stuff like that. And probably for some people, maybe something like Baldur's Gate or something that have that like impact on everyone. Everyone's playing at the same time and everyone's like discovering their own secrets and stuff. But like you said before, the, the, the this massive game that everyone was playing, discovering secrets at the same time, like drawing maps, 
that yeah, must have been something very incredible. special. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, and and now we have this phenomena that people playing, millions of people playing the same game at the same time. But when I was uh, telling you this, I was telling you playing with other people at the same time in the same room. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 a thing that it's hard to see nowadays, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Uh, and recently, I only recall playing like party games like that, you know, like mm -hmm. Mario Party and stuff like that. And uh, one other genre that I like to play like collectively is like mi mi mystery games, you know, like games like mm -hmm. uh, the one by San Barlow, you know, where you can take notes like to uh, cross exam some some of the characters and try to find who is the 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 main suspect suspect of a crime but other than that it's a uh, it's an experience that we don't we don't see very much yeah. these days yeah yeah that's very true okay and i'll stop interrupting you and let you keep going with your top <laughs> with 3 list, or 5 or list. whatever <laughs> yeah yeah so the the this, the second game that I that I usually bring with me is uh, Wonder Boy. Uh, Wonder Boy. I know that uh, it's also an IP that's special and Sega fans has uh, have fond memories with. Uh, but the very first one, which was a <coughs> sorry a part of the arcade, also was very special to me because uh, if it was the very first game that I that I got uh, physical. Uh, like it was a gift. I don't recall if it was uh, what what was the the occasion, but uh, I've managed to play this one a lot because it was very very challenging, and uh, I really liked uh, the, the the colors of the game, the characters. I I felt uh, a deep connection with this uh, with this game uh, because it was uh, like a, a lot of crazy stuff mixed. You know, it was. Like this uh, prehistoric kid with a uh, skateboard trying to yeah. <laughs> his girlfriend, you know, uh, <laughs> monsters and secret levels and lots of bosses, challenging, uh, great soundtrack. It was really, really good, you know, and uh, it's a series that I follow to this day, you know, mm -hmm. I, I still try to to play uh, new entries, you know, and, uh, and I, I recommend and so it was really really good Definitely. And, the, and the cover art of the game was very minimalistic you know the brazilian cover art was uh had the the pattern the white and uh, with the black lines pattern with only the representation of uh the wonder boy but very small representation of his uh, uh weapon and mm -hmm. uh an enemy and only that, there was no like big artwork, you know, something. It was very minimalistic, very, very minimalistic. So, L like many I... of the games of the the Master <clears throat> System covers, right? Yes, yes. The Western yes. ones, especially. Yeah, like that. but the, and, and sometimes I, like I, the what they chose to to draw on those covers didn't match the the gameplay or the the graphics at all. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but. If you take like the sports games, it's usually like the ball, like a mm -hmm. basketball game, it's a basketball, baseball game, it's a baseball. But this game has a, a charismatic character, you know, it could be like his face something, or a monster, yeah. something like that, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's a uh, it's it's interesting. I I have uh, to say, uh, interrupting you again, uh, that uh, there is no version of this game that I don't like. So be it okay. the Wonder Boy, be it Adventure Island on the yeah, Nintendo platforms. There is no version of this original game that I don't like, and and it's yeah. such. Uh, I mean, I, I discovered this like later, much later, uh, and I I was surprised by the quality of the arcade like experience. It's a yeah. very fun game. It's yes. challenging, but not impossible to beat. Which sometimes that was that's what happened back in the day. Mm -hmm. they, mm -hmm. We had challenging games, but the challenge was it's like nearly impossible to beat. Yes, not the case. Yeah. You can like practice and and with a few runs get much better. Um, 
the graphics were amazing. Whatever the the version is, even the Game Boy yeah. version, very yeah. fun to play, very nice to look at. Um, and it's it's a, a series that like like you said it like uh, throughout the years I've been following even the most recent remakes and re-releases yeah. and it's a very good series. But this first game, I think many people sleep on. And if you get the chance, try it on whatever mm -hmm. platform you can. Yeah, and it's funny that you mentioned Adventure Island because back in the day, I got into an argument, almost a fight with a friend of mine <laughs> due to the rivalry between Sega and Nintendo. When he got his Game Boy, he got a copy of Adventure Island. Okay. And I got my copy of Wonder Boy like way, way uh, previously, you know, uh, way before that. And when he was showing me the game, I, I started to like pick on him and accusing Nintendo that uh, Nintendo was copying a, a, a beloved Master <laughs> System game because uh, this, it, it's a, a small kid with a, a prehistoric kid with a skateboard trying to rescue uh, the girlfriend. And I was like, uh, like very strong arguments, you know, trying to uh, point him to, the, wrong, to the, the right direction. You know, you, you have to put this aside and come to play the 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 the, the original thing you yeah know? this is the thing that came before <laughs> I, I didn't know about this whole story with the ip the licensing deals but it, mm. it was part of the the childhood as well <laughs> yeah 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 very good like the console wars yeah. the console wars yeah okay so fantasy star so moving, wonder boy moving Moving yeah. on, uh, I have to say Castle of Illusion. Uh, I remember that uh, there, there, there were there were two versions: one for the Mega Drive and one for the Master System. And to this day, I feel that the Master System one is the most special one for me. I really like the Mega Drive version. It's more colorful, better sound, different levels. But the one, the one version that sticks uh, uh, that sticks with me. Uh, to this day is this this version, the Master System one. Mm -hmm. And uh, the specific level that brings me the, the most uh, special memories is the the candy level, the chocolate, ver uh, chocolate uh, uh, custom chocolate made uh, level phase. And uh, it was, uh, it was a, a great game uh, uh, licensed by, by Sega with uh, Disney uh, and Disney was always big, always huge. And to see Disney characters coming to our own console was very special. You know, I, I, I use it to watch the cartoons uh, on TV and it was an amazing game, an amazing experience. And uh, it became more special to me because I've managed to work and promote the remake uh, on the PlayStation 3 and yeah. Xbox 360 era. So it 2013, was... I believe, right? Uh, yes. I think so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Many years later to see the game coming back. And uh, it, it, it is also a great game. Mm -hmm. So uh, pays the homage uh, respectfully and uh, very entertaining, uh, creative ideas. And I felt really sorry when I saw the game coming out of the stores due to licensing, but also cheered and uh, uh, celebrated when the game returned uh, yeah. later on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I find this a very interesting case, the, the Master System version versus the Mega Drive one, because they're both good games. The Master yeah. System version is much harder, I think. Yeah, and, yeah. And it's much more of a like a, it has more puzzle elements yeah than the mega drive the mega drive one is like more of a, a straightforward platformer yeah completely and the master agree system with this. one has like the puzzle elements and like the mm -hmm. um like picking up um items to throw them and to like get higher places by picking a barrel picking up a barrel and throwing it and putting it in a certain place so there's a, a different element to it that I find very interesting. And and the fact yeah. that they they uh, like obviously worked so hard on both of these versions uh, yeah. and both came out so good yeah. is, is great, is amazing. Yeah, 
I, I, I really think that's the best scenario, you know, when you have the same game, so same name, but uh, different enough versions to enjoy them both as separate products, you know. So yeah. uh, I really love when this happens. Uh, so instead of simply trying to, to port uh, the game to create and to add uh, their own their, their elements that resonate with that particular hardware and its own uh, its own things. And sometimes when it's just a simple port, like a straight port, what ends up happening is the 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 less powerful system has a weaker version, like a lesser version yeah. of the game. Yeah. Right. They yeah. just try to port. Uh, but because it's not as powerful, they they leave out stuff or something, mm -hmm. and that this is the right approach. And it's yeah. it's seen in other examples as well. I remember Restar, for example, the Game mm -hmm. Gear version of Restar is different enough from the mm -hmm. it has some things in common, but very different as well. And it's a very enjoyable game as well in its own in its own right. Yeah. So that's the way to go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's the same for Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog, exactly. the first one. Yeah. Different enough, great, both great experiences, great games. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Is that the next game me, on the list? Yeah, which takes me to this game. <laughs> okay, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, this let, 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 game. let let people let's let's let oh no not me not me you let's let people see. Okay, there we go. That that deserves the spotlight. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's that's and, uh, a very special copy, right? Yeah, Have because there. it has the autograph of the master, the legend, Yuzo Koshiro. Uh, and Danny, if you are hearing this, thank you so much once again, because it was uh, Danny's schemes that brought me this <laughs> copy, autographed copy, copy, and it's one of my most uh, uh, highly prized uh, uh uh, games in in the collection you know yeah. Uh, and yeah and it's an amazing game you know yeah. it's a great game with an outstanding soundtrack uh, by koshiro and his team mm -hmm. and uh later on it's uh, worth mentioning later on with the second uh and uh re reduced in size version of the master system uh that was the game that came with the console so if you if you if you bought the master system version uh i don't recall if it was three or two here uh that was the game that came in with the console and mm -hmm. wow what a great game to have you know built in your system it's uh it's amazing uh i have this version of the console that's the one that i chose to uh mod uh with uh rgb you know to have everything that uh, it deserves to to shine uh, with uh, a PVM and etc. Because it's amazing to turn this console on, seeing that shiny Sega logo uh, with the sound effects, and then starting with the the theme song of the game. So mm -hmm. brilliant, brilliant, outstanding yeah. decision by Tech Toy and Sega here uh, in Brazil. Yeah, and shout out to our good friend Danny Russell, who we yeah. miss, who we miss, and and. <laughs> Uh, yeah, great guy, great guy. So amazing guy, amazing guy. Yeah, excellent. So that that's how many? Number four, number four. Oh, that's four. Okay, okay. So next, so next, uh, I'm I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Oh my god. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's for a special reason here, and uh, I think I'm going to be the only one saying this uh, across uh, other guests that might come in uh, to talk about the Master System. But uh, instead of a game, I'm going to choose a series of games. Uh, uh, and it's very odd uh, if you think <laughs> about this, but it's the great series, the great uh, volleyball, great basketball, great soccer, the sports games, all of them. Okay, okay. Uh, 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 we know, we know, as uh, fans and, and, and that are following Sega's history across uh, ages, uh, how important sports games are for 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 the history of Sega. You know, with the we saw uh, the consolidation of the Mega Drive uh, or the Genesis in the U.S. 
uh, where uh, they 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 took the lead from Nintendo, uh, and sports games were one of the like the main uh, the main things uh, behind this that 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 big change with. Uh, licensing IPs like Joe Montana, the baseball ones, everything, everything related to sports. And I really enjoyed that era on the Mega Drive. But all of that started with the Master System for me. I remember playing some sports games in the Atari, like golf and, and, and boxing, uh, the, the boxing game by Activision. It was amazing back in the day. But oh, sure. uh, when you saw the uh, great volleyball and great basketball, which uh, are my two favorite ones, and the detail of the characters, the detail of the of the court, the detail of the ball, the gameplay, it was uh, really, really impressive. Really, really impressive. And uh, since you could play with a friend, so an, a collective experience, it became something special, you know, it became something really, really special. So I remember enjoying uh, that series of games, uh, like for many, many years, you know. So uh, uh, one special detail that was really great to me uh, uh, when playing those series was when you were uh, selecting your team, you were able to choose Brazil in some of these sports, like volleyball. Nice. We had uh, the the Olympic Brazilian national Olympic team uh, going for for the gold medal in '92 and also in '88. So this game coming out with Brazil, and you were able to listen the 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 national anthem with oh, nice. tune. It oh, was nice. incredible, incredible to hear the, the national anthem uh, with the cheap tunes <laughs> from the master system. Wow, that was incredible. <laughs> because uh, I, I was in school back in the day, we, we learned how to sing the national anthem. So we were getting familiarized with this stuff. And you were able to see the flag of our country there and also the national anthem. Wow, it was great. Yeah, And yeah. the, the game. Play, especially for great volleyball and great uh, basketball, top notch, top <laughs> notch. I really like this game. Uh, I I play this game very often, very often. Uh, uh, the one that I liked that I, I I would love to be like better gameplay wise is obviously football or soccer for our American friends. Yeah, it's not that great gameplay wise, but still I can have some fun with it. Yeah, yeah, it's. Reasonably okay, I think. <laughs> Reasonably okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are there are worse football games. And for sure, better, for sure. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a game. It's a game that it's you can game. play. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure, for yeah. sure. <laughs> okay, but, yeah. I actually I actually wasn't familiar with great volleyball, uh, and it looks really good. Looks really good. Yeah, really yeah. Love the colors. Yeah, the colors. The pixel too. art is incredible. Yeah. The characters and and I, if I'm not mistaken, great basketball has a similar uh, characters. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. for the picture is kind of similar, yeah. but also very interesting. Yeah, I I think uh, we should we need more volleyball games. To be honest, uh, I I oh, love I love Beach Spikers, for example, by Sega as well. Yeah, yeah. This is this is great basketball for for. People watching a little less, a little less detail. You don't see yeah. the eyes of the characters. But yeah, yeah, but still, still very nice to look at. Yeah, and yeah. and coming from the Atari, even more, right? Even more yeah. impressive. <laughs> yeah, and I, uh, I have a son, seven years old, and uh, uh, from time to time, I try to introduce some of these classic games to him, and I, I was going to show him uh, great volleyball the other day. And uh, it took me by surprise because it's a slice of history as well. Because you can see that the game brings the Soviet Union. Oh, so yeah. There's the national anthem. It has the, the flag, you know. And it, like, uh, uh, considering the time that we are now, like, 40 years later or something, uh, it put things into perspective, you know. So it's a slice of, of uh, history that it's in, encapsulated in, in a slice of gaming history as well. It's how old we are, my friend. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Or my Some countries don't exist anymore. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. But, uh, that's that's the the top five for me. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh, it's it's sometimes I, I, I thought I'll be honest. I thought you were gonna mention what uh, everyone else knows as California games. It's very special. Which very is special. like Jogos de Verão, right? So like summer Jogos games in, yeah. in, in in Brazil, uh, yeah. which I know is special as well. But but yeah, yeah. But great picks here as but, well. <laughs> but of course, the, the, these, uh, this is a, a, a living, uh, a living, breathing list, you know. Sometimes you, you, uh, maybe I will, I will bring uh, California games or even Shinobi. And also there's another game that uh, has a lot of history with within itself, which is very important to me, which is Black Belt. Black, okay. Belt, Black Belt was an important yeah. game, which I played a lot, very challenging, very special. And what was my surprise, my surprise when I learned like many years later that this game was uh, like a new version of a Hokuto no Ken game in Japan which is a manga series uh, mm -hmm. so important to me that I gave the name of the character, the main character in the series, to my son. So my son is called Kenshiro oh. <laughs> because of Feast of the North Star. So okay. that brings me to this... Uh, this okay, wait, here. wait. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, okay. I have a, a copy of Black Belt from, the, from that time. But when I learned that there was a game in Japan for the Sega Mark III, Uh, mm -hmm. That was the original version with Kenshiro starring it as the main star. I had to get this one. I don't have a Sega Mark III here with me, <laughs> but I have the, the game, you know, once I get the console, I will be able to play this uh, with my son. And uh, I like to have this uh, both versions with me, but a really solid game. Yeah, which is what we're looking at right now. Yeah, yeah. so the, the Mark III game. Yeah, uh, I, I I completely understand the the uh, Sega choosing to uh, create this uh, karate guy like more generic because the IP wasn't popular in the West. But uh, either way, it was a very solid game. And and it's another thing that shows how old we are. Because uh, <laughs> if 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 it this was released in in two thousand twenty four. Obviously, it would have retained the, like the original name, and because like uh, anime and manga are are obviously mm -hmm. big now, and people yeah. in in the West people are supposed to understand this and know what this is and enjoy it. So it's a very <laughs> different time in that regard as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and uh, I really loved that uh, for the. For the most recent uh, Feast of the North Star uh, by Sega, mm -hmm. uh, by the the RGG team, yeah, they put uh, Easter egg where you can find uh, the cartridge of uh, of this game in the <laughs> desert and bring home with you uh, to play the game. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, one of the recent uh, Yakuza games, I think it's the the man who uh, guided his name, yeah. Yeah. Gaiden, yeah, also has the the game. Uh, yeah, you have uh, a master system. Yeah. With, that's and you can find games. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's a that's a good point. Also, thanks for also reminding me the, of that. In the top five. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great game. Great game. I, I really like uh Gaiden. Yeah, very good game. But we're yeah. not here to talk about Uh, like a dragon slash yakuza. Okay, yeah. <laughs> we're we're gonna take a quick break here, uh, Renato, and we're we're gonna come back and talk a little bit more about the master system in Brazil, but more now in, in a more generic point of view because we, we you mm -hmm. shared you were gracious enough to share your own experiences, mm -hmm. but uh, we want to know more about like the the impact of the system in the country. All right. So after we got this like more personal approach to the the master system, uh, Tech Toys uh, like first foray into working with Sega and stuff, which by the way were was discussed uh, when uh, I had um, 
Stefano Arnold on the on the show last season. Oh, so that's amazing. a very a very cool episode that I'm really proud of. I uh, really need to get him back on the show to discuss the 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 more like recent years, the like the mm -hmm. last few years that he was in charge of Tech Toy. But um, now we'll, we're gonna go go take a more like countrywide approach to this. But I, yeah. I wanted to just remind people. Uh, before we get into that, that you can support the Sega Lounge. So if you wish to support the show in any way by buying us a coffee or getting some awesome themed uh, merch, you can by going to thesegalounge.com slash support. Uh, you can help us pay the bills and we'll be forever grateful. Also, if you're watching us on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to the channel as well. We're, we're releasing more video content these days, including interesting clips. Speaking of that uh, tech toy related episode we had last season, you'll probably see some video clips of that soon on the on the channel. So stay tuned for that. But uh, I'm here with my good friend Renato Almeida and a massive Sega fan. Uh, Renato, how would you describe the impact of the Master System uh, in Brazil? When it first launched, like the, the, the first couple of years or something, how important was this system for the gaming industry in Brazil, from your perspective, of course? I believe that it complete, completely changed the landscape uh, for kids and uh, youngsters uh, in preparing uh, an entire generation to get in contact with technology you know so i i really believe that was the the size of the impact because uh before that we had uh, the atari and like regular toys and so action figures like he-man rambo uh, gi joe uh, and etc but uh with the master system the popularization of the master system and uh, the investment that Tech Toy uh, was uh, making into the country with other products like uh, their computer toy called Pansy Bane, uh, it was it was like like a very big impact, you know. And uh, you could see that because uh, it was obviously something that was aimed at kids, but. Uh, it became a business, you know, it became a big business. Uh, we saw the rise of uh, specialized stores, uh, rental stores, uh, uh, districts uh, focused on video games in big cities uh, like Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro. Uh, but also you could see this impact everywhere, not only in magazines, specialized magazines, but also in like consumer magazines so from time to time you could see a piece about uh, how in, how big the industry has, was getting about tournaments getting bigger about uh, celebrities joining uh, the the Sega following and also on television you know so we we had a uh, TV shows uh, which uh, were not originally created uh, to uh, aim at gamers or, or kids who like to play games, but that instead uh, decided to have some sort of uh, coverage and uh, until the point where we had a TV show where Tech Toy and SBT, a major television channel, a public channel here, uh, created a partnership where they put kids inside the video games. So through the technology of the time, uh, using their cameras and uh, like blue screen uh, or green screen, green screen, they were able to like uh, record the kids and uh, put the kid inside uh, Alex Kid in a level of Alex Kid. So I, rem it was, I remember that. I remember seeing that recently. Remember that somewhere? Yeah. Not 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 that. Not seeing that yeah, yeah, yeah. then, but recently. I think a few weeks or months ago i remember someone shared this. maybe it was you sharing that what was the name of the show by the way it's a t tv game but also put in the search sbt sbt yeah 
because it's the it's the television channel. Yeah, the channel. Probably we will find something uh, uh, to illustrate this part of the conversation, <laughs> but it was uh, nowadays it's going to be like very silly you know if you watch this and if you see this it's totally silly and kind of stupid i remember like the i i, I can't really now f uh, find anything but I, i remember um seeing like the the level like th that that puzzle uh in in alex kid that part that you had to jump on the tiles that mm -hmm. had the little symbols yeah and yeah. The, the the kid was trying to f jump on yeah. the right uh, tile and he missed, I think. So he died in the game or yeah. like there was like an, an enemy coming at him and he was like punching yeah. the air and stuff. Yes. <laughs> so it, it was a, a, com a complete gimmick. So there was uh, someone <laughs> behind the screen yeah. uh, playing the game, trying to emulate what the kid was doing in front of the camera. Uh, and the, and, the, and the, the, the figure of the kid was covering the character, the sprite, so mm -hmm. you couldn't see the real character, Alex Kid. <laughs> but it was terrible, you know, no response <laughs> whatsoever. We were far, 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 far from the Kinect experience, okay. you know, or, the, or even the activator. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but, but I, I remember watching that, uh, that, that short uh, clip of, of that show and thinking, uh, like, if you remember what we had back then and, and like, it must have blown kids minds were when oh, they watched course. that like oh that's it, amazing and if i go it to was... that show i i can be in the game and that's yeah. like oh yeah and if you, you win you're going to get uh, as prizes new cartridges or accessories or consoles you know so it was really really special everyone was dreaming about that <laughs> uh, I, I, i bet every single kid in the country was uh asking for for the help of their parents to write a letter to be uh, chosen yeah. by the, the show you know yeah uh, that's it <laughs> but other, other than that i also remember uh tv global which is the biggest uh tv channel in brazil mm -hmm. uh they had uh, a show where they used to talk about the the making of uh, of their soap operas or other shows in the in their uh In the, in, in the television channel and at some point they started to share tips and tricks for video games and also through a partnership with Tectoy they started to uh, put out uh, conte conte uh, some contests to uh, get prizes to fans who wrote letters and okay. in one particular occasion uh, also it's possible to find a clip of this on YouTube the host of the show was completely uh, swamped by letters. So it was insane, uh, an insane <laughs> amount of letters to try to get uh, something from the show. So oh, I, you have the clip. I, I found the Alex Kid footage, uh, which <laughs> for people watching, uh, yeah. Remember, you need to look at this through the lens of uh, like a, a kid yeah. in the early 90s. So uh, how amazing was this, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's yeah. so it's very, it's very special, you know. Uh, 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 it, it 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 may like silly and stupid, but it was so special, and uh, the kids at the time felt appreciated, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and also more more uh, uh, initiatives by Tech Toy, like for for instance, we had our own. Uh, hotline for Sega games. Yeah. So you were able to call a place where we obviously we thought it was like a like Sega, the Sega building. Someone working for for the company to help you with uh, a trick or, or a tip to pass like a difficult level or to mm -hmm. achieve some a game. So games started to be they they started to be like a part of our lifestyle. So uh, we saw magazines, we saw TV shows, we saw uh, the emerging interest uh, uh, for technology, you know, following what's what's what was new in the arcades 
or even uh, what's coming after the Master System with Mega Drive or even the Super Nintendo or other mm -hmm. consoles. And uh, some events bringing uh, uh, new accessories and new peripherals as well. So the biggest uh, technology and consumer show here, they started to get a uh, bigger and bigger space uh, dedicated to, to games, uh, which was... Uh, the, the attendance level uh, like like rose uh, during this this time uh, mostly by video rental stores uh, well it was the kickstart of a, of a, a new era of interest mm -hmm. towards technology and, and games you know yeah and and putting things into perspective uh, how were things before the master system before tech toy? made this deal with Sega? Because I, um, I know that it was hard to import things, like yeah. electronics especially, because of high taxes, right? So electronics were taxed really high, so that made it difficult for companies to yeah. sell the products there, like foreign companies to bring their, their, their consoles there. So like, for example... The, the NES, which would probably be the, the closest thing to the Master System uh, back then, wasn't really a thing because of that as well, right? Yeah. Apart yeah. from maybe like yeah. a clone console or two, maybe? Yeah, yeah, of course. It Everything comes down to the what was happening in the country, you know. And uh, it, it's worth to remember that until 1984, we were in a dictatorship, a military dictatorship uh, across the country. And due to that, uh, there was a lot of difficult and uh, challenging process to handle, uh, like importing. So uh, uh, companies, foreign companies had difficult time to do business here. And there was uh, this particular law that would uh, excuse companies for uh, cloning systems, you know, so... Uh, <laughs> Uh, so the cl the clone era like uh, really uh, rose and it was a, a bright and shiny moment for cloning companies. Uh, the Clone Wars, with, then. The cl the Clone Wars. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, uh, when it comes to the Atari, uh, so Atari systems being cloned uh, across the board, but also we had some presents before that uh, with Philco. Fuco uh, uh, put out their own version of uh, of Pong, which which was called Telejogo here. Okay. Uh, and later on, Fuco had a partnership with Hitachi, the, the the Japanese company, and they got some some sort of deal to uh, uh, launch television here, televisions and TV sets in Brazil, but. Uh, it was the Wild West, you know, <laughs> because you either had a <laughs> that you could purchase here uh, like everywhere by Brazilian companies. Uh, and it's the same for software and computer. So it was the same. And later on, uh, later, uh, almost entering the, the 90s, we saw some of the companies uh, trying to uh, get into the official area uh, with licensing. So we had uh, Tech Toy with Sega, but also... Uh, Gradiente uh, with Nintendo, so they they did release like a late version of the NES here, uh, and then uh, the Super Nintendo later on, and uh, Gradiente uh, entered a partnership deal with uh, Estrela, which is a big toy uh, company here, and they created a new brand called Playtronic, and Playtronic mm -hmm. was the company putting uh, uh, all of the releases for the Super Nintendo, be it uh, hardware or software, into the market, you know. So uh, either you bought clone systems or you had to import uh, uh, from countries like Paraguay because uh, there is the border in the very south part of Brazil. Uh, and it was, a popular, it was a popular destiny for vacation. So families used to go there to get... Uh, Imported stuff, you know, yeah. uh, be it from Japan or the U.S. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that was the reason that later on my Mega Drive came from Japan through Paraguay. So, okay. uh, so I, I had the Japanese system because I bought the Mega Drive before Tech Toy started to sell uh, the official version here. 
Because yeah. remember when I told you that the master system changed the perspective and we wanted the new thing, we wanted the best technology. Yeah. That was the whole reason. Yeah, yeah. And and it's worth mentioning that uh, Tech Toy, the, the like the, the partnership they had with Sega, they produced the the consoles locally. like yeah. locally. That's why they yeah. could benefit from uh, like like fiscal benefits and stuff. Because yes. if if I if I understand correctly, the reason why clone systems were allowed and excused. Uh, was because they were produced locally as well, right? Yeah. Whereas, yeah, exactly. if you had to, if you wanted like the the original, the 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 real thing, you had to to import. And yeah. being like a closed country in a dictatorship, yeah. usually you don't you don't want to like you ha you want to uh, benefit like local companies and local production. Yeah. So yeah. it's the and, protection of the market. Exactly. It's so like. Imagine being uh, like a Nintendo or or something and and having to fight, <laughs> like to having this unfair fight with uh, local companies who were cloning your system. So it yeah, doesn't really yeah. make sense, right? And and since uh, it took so long to Nintendo to finally board uh, Brazil as a territory uh, mm -hmm. business wise, that's the reason we saw Fami clones. So yeah. the uh, 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 like uh, really striving here for quite some time. Mm -hmm. So obviously there was no competition to what uh, Tectoy was doing with the master system due to uh, 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 the local manufacturing and the reach uh, of the business. But it was a critical time. And that's the reason the master system won the console war here uh, in that generation, you know. But... Uh, uh, the clone systems and the FAMI clones are also really praised and they have a special place in everyone's hearts uh, uh, across the country. Uh, but uh, they didn't put out ads, they didn't create shows on television, they didn't. Exactly. So, yeah, it's... Uh, they weren't as cool, right? Yeah. If you wanted to be it one of the, the cool kids. The second best thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure. Okay, and in one of the third, the first things you said here on this episode was that the master system is still alive in Brazil. Um, it, it is in a way everywhere because thankfully we have a thriving community of people making games for retro consoles, not just the master system, but Mega Drive, Dreamcast, Saturn, but. In Brazil specifically, it's still alive because it's still being sold today, right? Mm -hmm. It's still mm -hmm. like a, 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 a current product uh, that Tech Toy puts out, right? Is, is it <clears throat> That's like, correct. Is it something that uh, you feel like uh, kids today still want or is it more like a, more of a nostalgia thing for older people? Yeah, I have, the, I, have, I have the perfect story for, for that. Uh, Excellent. <laughs> uh, I, I, used it to, I used it to work for a, a company uh, like 20 years ago, something like that. So 20 years ago, it's not the 1980s kids. It's, 20, it's, it's the 20, 20, uh, 2000s because mm -hmm. our, our memory tends to fool us. But uh, yeah. so yeah. I... I, I I was working for a, a company back in the day, and I had a friend, and I remember uh, him telling me uh, that he wasn't happy that uh, his uh, daughter was uh, growing up and uh, having more and more interest in having a, a, a smartphone or a cell phone to play games and something like that. And he told me that uh, he, he was in favor of video games. He knows how important there is uh, for kids, you know, uh, all the benefits, but he wasn't happy with the whole smartphone situation. And after thoughtful consideration, he decided to get one of those Master System versions to his daughter. Okay. And she loved it. She had like, uh, she was like seven or eight, something like that. And she adored the system. She loved the system and she started to play all of those games. Alex Kidd, uh, some other IPs lo localized and, and licensed by, by Sega, like the Wood Woodpecker game, which was a game later on 
exclu exclusively here in Brazil, uh, and more games like that. So she, uh, were, she was able to enjoy the system, even being in, being it a very old system for her in the 2000s, you know. And uh, right now in 2024, I see the same situation happening, you know. If you are from, uh, if you are a concerned father or mother, you don't want to put uh, an iPad or, uh, or, a, or a smartphone on the hands of your kid, but you want them to enjoy, a, to have a great time with video games because they, they can help with the development of the kid. That's a, a good choice. Also, it's cheap. It's something affordable. You know, video games are not affordable in general. They are very expensive. Even to Very this true. day, actually, yeah. especially these days. Especially now, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, a system like that with 150 games built in, it's really, really, really useful, really helpful. Mm -hmm. And not only the the console version, but also the portable versions as well. Because Tectoy put out two versions of a portable console, one for the Mega Drive and one for the Master System. So also a, a great choice. And uh, that's the reason I see this is, uh, uh, to this day, uh, a big presence in the market. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I'm, uh, this is something that I'm very curious about, about the numbers of uh, how many they have in, in stock, how many they produce. Because uh, what you see nowadays is the, like the same version that you have, that you are able to find in, uh, in stores today is the same of five years ago. So yeah. they are not updating anything, so they are only bringing more of the same. But it's probably but... like model model 8 or 9 or something <laughs> of the master system now, right? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> awesome. By the way, for people wondering what the Woody Woodpecker game looked like, this or looks like, this is yeah, it. It's, yeah, yeah, it's very charismatic. Very charismatic. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I, 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 I would uh, be happier. Uh, I would be happy if it's uh, if it was better gameplay wise as well. <laughs> Not so gameplay, but it's uh, it's uh, it, it it does the job because it's uh, charismatic and mm. uh, it brings one of the popular characters uh, across the board here. Mm. Yeah, excellent, nice. So, and and did you did you have the chance to also bring to the podcast before to the show before the Street Fighter Two, which was exclusive and one of the rarest games of the system? I think we talked about. I don't know if it was with you <clears throat> or with Stefano. Uh, we oh, okay. we talked about this. Yeah. I think like the exclusivity of Street Fighter Two, yeah, yeah, in Brazil. That's amazing, that's a, right? That's actually a very that's good a point. a marvelous feat, uh, uh, development-wise uh, and business-wise, because to handle uh, all of the licensing things with Capcom and Capcom allowing this uh, this game to to come to fruition, uh, and it's a, it's a solid game, you know, if you consider mm -hmm. uh, the time and the conditions where this was developed. And we know that there are clones, uh, Chinese clones of Street Fighter for the NAS, but they don't stand a chance yeah. uh, against uh, uh, this version, you know. Mm -hmm. and yeah, it's, and, uh, and it's, it's very amazing rare, how... Very expensive. Oh, I, I believe that, yeah. And it's incredible how Tech Toy, I, I had the chance to, to discuss this with, with the, like, the, the, the founder, like the first CEO of Tectoy. Um, but it's incredible how they were able to not only distribute, but produce the console, create games, uh, considering uh, like having like the, the business, um, I don't know, like the, uh, the discerning eye to, to understand that, that they should bet on this, system on these decisions they were able to convince sega which was not easy like like mm -hmm. that, that, that interview showed um but they were able to pull it off <laughs> and that's really something that paid off for them as well so it's yeah really amazing yeah yeah totally totally excellent yeah I, i'm still chasing this game like uh <laughs> 
like a completing completing box version of this one it's uh, <laughs> i'm still this one in my collection yeah but it's highly praised mm -hmm. Uh, among others, among others. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like Brazilian popular Brazilian TV shows adapted to uh, to games like uh, uh, Castelo Hatimbun, which is the Hatimbun Castle. We had uh, some toy characters that became really popular uh, across uh, across Christmas and special uh, uh, Child's Day, uh, Children's Day here as well. That was that was adapted to a game like. Uh, the the stinky frog uh, as we say uh, sapo chulé <laughs> yeah sapo chulé uh, also uh, TV shows from global yeah it was uh, Turma da Mónica uh, right Turma like Monica. which was like more of a, like a, a Wonder no Boy three Dragon Strap but like adapted to that show that that yeah. cartoon yeah 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 Turma da Mónica needs no introduction. <laughs> Having, having the opportunity to work with .mu uh, for many years now, uh, when uh, they they put out the the remake of uh, Wonder Boy, uh, and seeing that they were trying to uh, connect the Monica verse to that game as well, with fans creating this the sprites <laughs> like hand drawn art of uh, Monica characters to put into the to the game, we see how big of an impact this is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and that that was actually, I think, we, 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 we touched on the, the last question that I had, which is like, not just the impact on the gaming industry in Brazil, but the cultural impact of the Master System. And all the things that we mentioned throughout the show, like TV shows featuring the Master System, which was not something that... Uh, happened before um, yeah the th the fact that many of like Brazilian IPS were adapted into video games that shows how big this thing was over there mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um, exactly exactly do, do you feel like it's still part of the conversation in a way um, because looking back, for example, uh, I know the Master System, for example, here in Portugal was, was big in a way as well. I know many people, not my case specifically, I, I started with the Mega Drive, uh, but many people that I know started with the Master System mm -hmm. and are still big fans of the Master System. Uh, and that's the same across Europe as well. The Master System I remember reading is Sega's second most sold console of all time, uh, especially uh, in Europe and Brazil. Like those are the two main territories. Uh, do you feel like it's people still talk about it uh, when they talk about like games in general or is the conversation pretty much dominated by the current systems or more even when they talk about Sega, the more the, the, the later ones? What's your perspective on that? It depends on the the generation that you are approaching, <laughs> <laughs> because you if you are talking to uh, to our generation, you know people in their thirties, late thirties, and early forties. Obviously, every time that we talk about video games, be it new releases or like the classics, uh, there's always some space to connect the dots and uh, and get to the master system, you know, because it, it, it's that big of an impact. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, in general, I don't think that uh, it's the same for other generations. Uh, what I can see is that uh, this passion towards uh, retro, uh, it's being uh, more and more, getting more and more audience. So you can see youngsters getting interesting, like a, uh, pixelated uh, games or pixelated characters or retro, the retro approach in some of IPs uh, of new indie games. Yeah. And this all comes from uh, the, 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 the very same place, you know, from the passion towards those games. And uh, I see that we have a very uh, fruitful community of developers uh, bringing new Master System games today and new Mega Drive games today. And they are also influencing the indie scene. Uh, and uh, 
if we have uh, like kids or youngsters playing retro inspired content today, it's because of this connection. So they might not know about the master system, but they are being impacted like for sure, for sure. You know, that's uh, without a doubt uh, a connection that you can that you can create. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned people creating games for the master system. Is that something that you follow closely or not so much? Oh, you you bet I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I I I, I really support uh, initiatives like that. And currently, I am supporting. Uh, when I when, when I mean supporting, is working uh, to support with my knowledge and my my company uh, the release of a brain of a, of a brand new game for the Mega Drive and also the the a new console created in the territory here, the Sega Neptune. The, oh yeah. The, oh the, nice. The, yeah, so it's not the Sega Neptune, obviously, because of, of uh, licensing deals, uh, but it's the GF1 Neptune, mm -hmm. uh, which by a company, a Brazilian company here called Gamescare, and I've been supporting them uh, uh, through PR and also business development. So uh, they are hard at work there with their FPGA board, uh, creating... Uh, content, uh, co creating a new console from scratch, uh, which will be able to play the the Genesis or Mega Drive and also 32X. And we also announced recently that there's a Master System core in the console. So yeah, the Master System lives on in 2024 yeah. and 2025 <laughs> and 2026 and many years down the road. Uh, and yeah, obviously I... If I see an opportunity like that, uh, I, I will jump into it uh, like immediately. And I, I know uh, that this uh, has everything to be a very interesting and uh, great project by Gamescare. And also for the country of Brazil, you know, uh, with the, all this relationship that we have uh, towards mm -hmm. uh, this era of video games, and these particular systems, uh, yeah, it's going to be a, a quite a ride for for this console. And Brazil is one of the most prolific countries in terms of like people developing games for retro consoles. Not just for retro consoles, but since that's what we're yeah. talking about now, for retro consoles specifically. Uh, even Sage, every year, the uh, Sonic uh, Amateur Games Expo, Every year yeah. has a lot of Brazilian yeah. developed Entries, games, yeah. um, and so 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 it's really nice to see, uh, like, because the the fans are what's driving these retro consoles forward and keeping mm -hmm. them alive. So people creating these great games for older consoles, um, I mean, it makes me happy. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm actually, I, I, when I when I think now of, uh, and, and it's, it's a little bit unfair because there are so many great games that are being developed or have been released recently. But I, I uh, think about a game that I, I actually have, I can show it a little bit. Uh, it's, uh, I've been following this person on, on uh, Twitter. And this is a Master System game that mm -hmm. looks like, like a, a mix between like maybe fantasy zone and mm -hmm. um I don't know what else I could maybe like the, the those space invaders and asteroids yeah. and stuff, right? But it's very colorful and it's a game that's being developed for the master system in twenty twenty four. So mm -hmm. and this is by um Adam at Adam. Bad Computer Zero mm -hmm. from England. Apparently, mm -hmm. uh, and actually, you can you can actually find Adam on on itch.io as well. Uh, yeah, if yeah. if you if you search uh, Master System and Mega Drive, uh, like in a place like itch.io, you will see many projects being developed mm -hmm. there, and also influencing other projects. And of course, we have uh, some some big names here creating interesting stuff uh, uh, with their own limitations uh, for being indie developers, but making the scene uh, 
prosper, you know, mm -hmm. and that's really exciting. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it, it makes us, uh, it, us older guys, uh, you know, hopeful that this, this, these systems will never die because. <laughs> Oh yeah, there, there are still and and people are pushing like the limits of the yeah of these yeah. older systems. So it's really really nice to yeah. That's to the see thing that I find doing. most interesting. You know, uh, if we if we could put some of these guys in a time machine and get them back to the nineties <laughs> or eighties to talk to the original developers. Wow, what could be done, you know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, because th th they're not restrained by by time, um, yeah. like deadlines and, yeah. and having to, you have to release this game now and stuff. So yeah, they're, they have more freedom Pure to Pure passion. Work. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Okay. <laughs> Renato, always awesome to have you on the show. Uh, we, we need to wrap things up, but any final thoughts on, on, on the master system for people listening to us and like, uh, any final message to celebrate the 35 years of the console in Brazil? I think we touched, uh, this, uh, like in this last, uh, part of the conversation, the master system will keep with, uh, it's going to be with us for many years. Uh, in many capacities, so it's only a matter of staying tuned in places like, like the Sega Lounge and uh, also on the community. Uh, so don't 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 st don't stress. No, there's no reason to stress. There's no reason to panic. This is a system that we will live for many years now. And uh, the thing that I that I always say is that I'm pretty grateful for uh, being involved uh, uh, since since I was a kid with this mm -hmm. uh, amazing universe and then later on uh, getting me getting the opportunity of being driven by this passion to enter this business and to be here now supporting this and uh, uh, so I'm very very grateful for the master system and I hope I hope no I'm pretty sure that there's a lot of people that will feel the same. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. And, and <laughs> since we're shouting out people and, and project and stuff for people wanting to be, uh, you know, up to date with master system happenings worldwide, smspower.org. Yeah. It's a yeah, great, great resource. Uh, great the, the, the creator of this is also, um, one of the people behind uh, lizard cube, one mm -hmm. of the founders of lizard mm -hmm. cube who worked on yeah. wonder boy three, uh, Omar and um, and they they do they actually I believe they have like a yearly contest for people creating uh, mm -hmm. master system games as well and a lot of great yeah, projects come amazing. out of this yeah so do check this out awesome that's amazing yeah Renato where can people find you online what can you tease in terms of what you're working on if you can. Sega or what otherwise, what, yeah. what should people be excited about? <laughs> yeah, and now, now this is, episode is going to be also a slice of time, uh, historically speaking, because we don't have Twitter at the moment. Twitter is banned from Brazil. That's true. Uh, so if you are from the future and you're listening now, like 20 years, uh, like in 2040 something, 2050, Remember that there was a time we Brazil didn't have Twitter. But <laughs> remember that Brazil was the first one of the first countries uh, that that banned Twitter, and that <laughs> led to the demise of that social network worldwide. And everyone moved over to Blue Sky. No, that's probably yeah. not going to happen. But okay, no, no, yeah. no. But yeah, so so that's a thing. Uh, it's worth mentioning. And right now, uh, in addition to, to the professional work uh, that we've been sharing and, and we, we try to spread joy uh, through, the, through our work uh, with games, uh, people can find us at uh, Agencia Underline uh, Masamuni. Uh, uh, and also, 
I'm, I've been using uh, Instagram and TikTok for my personal, uh, my personal hobbies, you know, so to talk about my collection and to talk about uh, video games and classic and retro and arcades. So it's super arcade center. It's the it's as simple as that on TikTok and Instagram, Super Arcade Center. So I've been doing unboxing videos when I'm visiting Japan. So a lot of good stuff, you know, spreading joy uh, across the board as well. So Super Arcade Center is the place I, I like to. I would love to have more time to uh, talk about my my passion uh, and to like uh, bring more content. But usually uh, that's the, the, the spot where you find me uh, with uh, reels, stories, and, and posts uh, on social media. There Because you go. Blue, Sky, Blue Sky is still, I don't know, uncharted yeah. territory. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. So check it out. All links, as usual, in, in the show notes. So do check out uh, all places where you can find and maybe maybe twitter soon again <laughs> or x yeah. or whatever it's called yeah 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 okay Renat, thank you very much for coming thank always you so a pleasure much. You. to have you on the always show a pleasure and yeah. i i think we'll we'll need to set up that that little challenge episode oh yeah please, you, please. yeah you you have to like come up with a, a team of brazilian sega fans to Count join me. you Yeah, yeah we have, it's going we'll, to be awesome. We'll make and it congrats happen. Congrats for, the, congrats for the the show. Uh, I I had the chance to see the show evolving, and now with uh, with video, the video component. You know, you, we you, I think people will will enjoy more seeing the happy faces of the guests to be here because it's <laughs> such an amazing place to come and share stories. You know. Uh, yeah, it's even better to illustrate with your videos and the conversation. Uh, great. So congratulations for the initiative. And I hope to see you on Brazilian television. Why not a show on of Brazilian course. television? Of course. <laughs> uh, like, 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 let's make it happen. Uh, what, what was it? The, the, the SBT show? Uh, play TV game? TV game. Oh, TV game? TV game. Okay, okay. TV game. Play, play game, TV game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> a I'll, new I'll, version. 2024 I'll do this and, and, and like and, and punch the air and stuff to, <laughs> yeah. to defeat enemies and, and uh, maybe I'll let, let's do let's do it with like something more more modern like like a dragon or something I'll yeah. be I'll be QU be amazing yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you great. very much for the kind words though thank you very much and uh, let, let's let's keep in touch and, and I, I wanted to be back on the show very very soon again Thank Always you, a pleasure. Take See care. See Bye-bye. Oh, and by the way, I'm saying goodbye to Renato, but also thank you very much. I was so into the conversation. Thank you very much for everyone to, for listening or watching the video. And as Renato just said, just, you know, uh, youtube.com slash at the Sega Lounge. It's the, the place to find the video versions of our shows or the SegaLounge.com as per usual. You can find everything there. Um the next few shows will probably be a little bit different because I'll be a few days uh, away from, from home. But uh, if you enjoy the Sega Lounge Challenge portion of the show, you, you want to stay tuned for the next couple of episodes or so. So yeah. Anyway, thank you for watching or listening. Take care. See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>the Sega Lounge, hosted by me, KC, and part of Radio Sega's network of live shows and podcasts. Theme song and incidental music by OSC. Got any suggestions? Drop me an email to podcast at thesegalounge.com. Find us at The Sega Lounge on X Twitter and Instagram, at thesegalounge.com on Blue Sky, and be sure to check out our Twitch and YouTube channel for live video content. You can find previous episodes of the show by going to thesegalounge.com on the Terra Player app and wherever you listen to podcasts.
A Mixed On Productions podcast.